Hello YouTubers. Welcome to Dragon Oak Treasures. Well, it's been a nice, awesome, long weekend. I had a great cookout with the family yesterday. My wife made some great steaks on the grill. Man, it was a good day. Today is Monday. I got some good deals over the weekend on uh, some eBay stuff, um, hard finds, but I see I haven't got a lot of videos, uh, likes or shares on my eBay hauls, but I've got quite a few likes on uh, the family history and bloodline. Well, today I want to talk about, instead of eBay, which is still doing okay, I'm the Dragon Oak Treasures. Um, if you could share and uh, hit like, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Um, really want to spread the word about some of this stuff. Um, today is about the pagan pilgrim, Thomas Morton. Now, he is a pretty awesome dude here. Let me show you this right here. A lot of people don't realize that uh, Thomas Morton, you know, a pagan pilgrim, the first heathen. Um, let's talk about, uh, I've got a few facts here. Like I said, I, uh, I'll read them to you. This is not a, you know, maybe my son, he was going to fix up the video and do some music and some fun stuff. So maybe he'll uh, do some of that for me. But in the meantime, let's just, I'll do a little bit of reading here. Uh, Thomas Morton, uh, the pagan pilgrim of Marymount, was an uh, early English colonist from England. He was a lawyer, a writer, and a social reformer. His work and study of the Native American culture. Um, Thomas was brother to George Morton, which came over on the Anne, um, the Pilgrim Forefather and Puritan, which is my grandfather, which is, so Thomas is my uncle. Um, and let me tell you, <clears throat> they ended up really treating old Thomas like shit. They put him on an island uh, and stranded him. If it wasn't for his uh, native friends to give him some supplies and food. But let me tell you about that. Uh, if my grandfather George was alive, he came over on the Anne with supplies and when uh, Plymouth Colony was at the brink of destruction and uh, it was going to be no longer, he showed up with his ship full of supplies and, you know, he pretty much saved, you know, the, everybody, medicine and everything. And uh, t George, my grandfather, but he died the first year um, after, you know, coming to America. And if he was alive, Thomas, little Thomas, would never, he would never have allowed them to strand him on the island. Just want to point that fact out. <laughs> um, let's see here. Thomas Morton, uh, he erected a maypole and celebrated the May Day festivals in Quincy, Massachusetts, Mount Wallinston. Wallinston. Um, it was, uh, they danced and drank beer and sang songs like Robin Hood, Friar Tuck, and Merry Old England along with the sheriff of Nottingham and uh, Washington's family. You know, that's why we share a tree with George at the Capitol, and it goes on and on. In fact, George Washington is related to Greasley lineage of England. Um, but, yeah, the pagan, they danced and party just like in England. Pilgrim, right there, forefather of America. Christ, a lot of people, let me just keep reading, let me just keep reading, because I do have some notes, okay, so bear with me. They, had, they were trying to make peace with the Indians and do it the right way, okay, some of them. Okay, Morton, May Day, okay, Maypole, and celebrated the May Day festivals, okay, blah, blah, okay, in England, May Day games, the May games, King and Queen of May represent Robin Hood and, and Lady Marian. Um, the Maypole, uh, Maypole is a pagan symbol symbolizing the sacred marriage of young women dancing with ribbons around the pole. It's called Morris Dancing. Uh, the Green Man symbol is in every church around the world. But the Green Man and May, May Day and dancing and Robin Hood, um, the Sheriff of Nottingham, Friar Tuck, even on statues in England, he's got a drinking horn. We're all of pagan lineage. Christian, pagan, it goes way back. Um, it was just uh, Morton and Ra Robin Hood enjoyed the May, Dames, May Day games uh, dancing. Um, but also the May games were enjoyed by kings and queens. King Henry VIII and Queen Catherine also enjoyed the games and festivals in the memory of the Green Man and Robin Hood. So, because a lot of our family, you know, it's always been a struggle between, you know, you know, we fleed England because of the church and religion and stuff. But the fact is, 
uh, 400 years ago when we found it in America, it was, uh, it was supposed to be founded on Christian and pagan. It goes a long ways back. It's not just Christian and the Pope and the Vatican and what they say. In fact, our oak tree is on the Vatican, you know. A couple popes were of, you know, the lineage. Pretty amazing stuff. But, this is about Thomas, the heathen. The heathen pilgrim. <laughs> uh, and, it was also enjoyed by the kings. And also, by King Charles I, by his royal warrant, date 18 October 1633, his people may not be disturbed, uh, lettered, or discouraged from any lawful recreation, nor from having May games. Okay? The king, right there, passed the law for that. Thomas wrote a book, um, New English Canaan, of Marymount and his view of the Indians. Um, Marymount, Morton's, it was Morton's Utopia. And Thomas More, the saint of England, you know, he's in, he learned everything from John Morton, Archbishop, you know, and talk about Utopia. And, you know, America is supposed to be uh, everybody's Utopia. And uh, green, you know, peaceful. And just like uh, Gotham, New York is Gotham. You know, that's it was a nickname from England. It is, that's a whole story. And bear with me. Share this. Like this. Keep, help me out, man, because I've got, I've got information and secrets that I'm going to share with you that is awesome. Some of just facts and stuff, which, you know, facts, okay? We're not talking. I'm not making things up. I'm not, you know, saying, you know, crazy things. It's just facts. Okay, let's see. Oh, Morton also, uh, you know, being the pagan that he was, you know, he's pretty tough, I'm sure. Um... Uh, he disliked the Puritans, their treatment of the Indians. He also had nicknames for the leaders. John Edencott, uh, the Great Swelling Fellow, Captain, Captain Littleworth, and the Short Mile Standish. He called him Captain Shrimp. You know, no disrespect to these fellows. You know, they were brave enough to come over. And a lot, a lot of people on Mayflower to Inn and all those ships were, uh, you know, they were cousins and uncles and family, you know. But like I mentioned, you know, we were the sheriffs of Nottingham, you know what I mean? Let's just keep that in mind. <laughs> so... You know, I suppose we had money at one time, but I've never had a lot of money. Uh, the Puritans cut down Morton's maypole and Maroon Morton on an island because Bradford was afraid to execute Morton because he had many friends in high places in London. And the fact is, Bradford, they bought land off the Mortons in Nottinghamshire. Uh, and his great-grandmother was Alice Morton, so he was in, he's in fact of, the, of our lineage, you know. That's why he ended up adopting Nathaniel Morton, my uncle, and some of the other Mortons. Uh, pretty cool, like uh, Sarah the Pilgrim Girl, there's a book written about her, and it's pretty, pretty fun stuff. Um, Morton actually praised the humanity of the Indians and mocked the Puritans with his nicknames. I mean, they, they really, you know, because he, he didn't care, he wasn't afraid, he's a Viking. Um, the Massachusetts Bay Colony had, had a royal charter from the king, and Morton, Morton got it revoked. <laughs> because King Charles... Uh, this day of the Puritans at that time, uh, which uh, soon after was the English Civil War uh, to separate from the English control. You know, so everything, you know, was founded from England. You know, people were like, ah, oh, you know, but it's all stuff, you know, a lot of information and everything, history and uh, knowledge comes from England. And, and that was always a battle, you know, Battle of Mortimer's Cross, you know, this, you know, they, they make that, one of our ancestors, you know, the Mortimer line and the Battle Oak in Mortimer, that was in, uh, the funny thing is, uh, um, what is it? The Three Suns comes up. It's called something, I can't think of it right now, but uh, some sort of eclipse or something with three suns come up in the sky. Or gives a reflection, however. It's pretty cool. But it's science, okay? Everybody use all this shit, but it's, it's science, okay? Druids, medical, healing, all that stuff. Alright, back to the pagan, not so much Christian beliefs of the forefathers of America. Most of, the found, found, most of the founding fathers were radicals who didn't even belong to any church, okay? Morton and Washington were Templars and Freemasons, roots to pagan Druid, ancient Egypt, okay? There are, there are, here's a few quotations I had from, from the founding fathers in Christianity and religion and stuff. Um, let's see which ones are good ones here. Thomas Paine, 1793. I do not believe in the creed creed professed by the Jewish Church, Roman Church, Greek Church, Turkish Church, Pro Protestant Church, or no, by any church. Okay, my guys, these are real hardcore. <laughs> uh, let's see here. 
uh, George Washington's funeral. Uh, let's let's say this. Uh, uh, Fillmore, President uh, Millard Fillmore. I am tolerant of all creeds, yet if any sect suffered itself to be used for political objects, I could meet it by political opposition. In my view, church and state should be separate. Religion and politi politics should not be mingled. Excuse me. All right. George, at George Washington's funeral, well, people don't know this, but uh, they threw uh, sprigs of uh, Achaia, it's a branch leaf thing, uh, into the grave to symbolize the rebirth of Orsis. Uh, and Abraham Lincoln, these are just some quotes here, that I do not, that I am not a member of any Christian church is true, 1846. Um, Grant, 17, which my family are great friends with Grant and even Abraham Lincoln, uh, Oliver P. Morton from our Throckmorton branch in England. He's uh, he was a war governor. He's a pretty great dude. Um, Grant declare church and state forever separate and distant, but each free within their proper spheres. Theodore Roosevelt. I hold that. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I hold that in this country there must be a complete severance of church and state. Now Theodore Roosevelt. All those parks that Trump's closing. Forest and stuff. I mean, you know, and he just planted a tree with uh, the French guy, French president, and he, you know, uh, you know, he's planting trees yet he's closing national parks and stuff. I mean, come on. Um, even the Declaration of Independence, you know, has certain quotations. You know, we held all these truths, you know, to be self-evident that all men are created equal, uh, unbelievable rights, liberty, pursuit of happiness. You know, Congress states in the in the Constitution. Which, you know, the Constitution was just a branch off the Mayflower Compact, which my family wrote, documented. Uh, make no law respecting an establish. Okay, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or property, the free exercise thereof. I mean, there's, it's just amazing, okay? It's back to pagan American symbols, hidden the Statue of Liberty, uh, pagan goddess, the hidden symbols, um, Athena. Uh, it's crazy. Freedom, marked the trees. It's just amazing how much is found on trees and everything, okay? The Liberty Tree is a whole great T T Thomas Paine poem. Um, it just goes on and on. It was just pretty funny, you know. They, it, it, there's so many things that people don't realize about American history. A lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, <laughs> the Maypole, pagans. Goes way back to ancient Egypt, Druids, healers, um, heathens. Um, this... America, they say, would have been more a more Earth friendly, you know, than what we, you know, have right now. Um, it's just Google Thomas More and check him out. He's just a great dude, the pagan pilgrim. It, you know, the Green Man symbol, Statue of Liberty at the Capitol, all through America, all through every church, Templars, Rosalind Templar Temple Church has over a hundred, hundred on there. Um, the D to the Statue of Liberty has branches all hidden through that, and she is one big symbol. Um, the sheriffs of Nottingham, Gotham, Morton, Nottinghamshire, you know, our oak trees close to uh, Queen Elizabeth's oak tree and Robin Hood's oak tree. Um, so it's always been a battle. It's always been a battle, religion, you know, Christian or pagan or what is true, what isn't true. I can't quite tell you yet, but I, I'm putting together symbols and information and facts, okay? This is all facts and science and proof. And everything I say is true. That, you know, nothing is lies. It's the Dragon Oak Treasures. Our oak tree is America's oak tree. You know, my name is a symbol of Morton in Nottingham, center of England, sheriffs of Nottingham, conqueror to uh, England, which, you know, the royal family right now don't like us so much because, you know, of the Norman blood. But the fact is, you know, they're so ignorant also that it goes all the way back to, you know, even now we know our most Irish blood and Scottish blood, you know, that's Viking lineage, goes back to Roman Empire, Troy Empire. So it's pretty amazing stuff. Um, please share, we like, join the heathens, the pagan pilgrim right there. 400 years of paganism from my family. Should be dancing around a tree, drinking a beer, okay? Let's have some fun. Let's reshare this. Help me out. Take care.